Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel for the 23rd day of March 2018. If you're new around here, we try to do daily audio clips on coaching related um, topics that are beneficial. Just pause there for a minute. Anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about the value of contrast. Contrast is something that we all experience. It's that concept of one or the other. Another way to define it is preference. And in making any change, contrast is useful because we can't know the need for to choose a large er topic peace if we don't have the unfortunate nature of war. We can't know happy if we don't know sad. We can't know light if we don't know dark. And in all things, contrast is present. Sometimes the known is brought into our alignment by the unknown. In other words, when we know what we want, we also will then learn what we don't want, right? And so it's valuable to when one is trying to make a change, ask themselves the individual or unpurposed question, what do I know that I desire? What do I know that I want? And then look for what would I automatically assume or be able to assume that I do not want from the place of what I desire? So often people say, I don't like the way I feel, I don't like what's happening here, or various other things, and they say, I'm tired of feeling this way. And the important part of the value of contrast is when you learn an emotional state you do not want, it is better able and easier to get to a state that you could want, would want, and eventually will be able to achieve. Now, emotions are difficult for many people because most often when a person makes a decision from an emotionally unstable or uncomfortable place, the consequences of the decision they have made then become, well, unpleasant, right? How many times have we said or done something from a place of anger, frustration, sadness, uh, despair, discouragement, rejection, ostracization, or another lower emotional state of being, and then went back and said, man, I wish I hadn't done that. So when we are in the middle of a negative emotion, one thing that we must do in the benefit of contrast is go, how would I rather feel? What do I want to feel instead? And then another way to say that is, what do I want to focus on instead? This works wonderfully for people that struggle with anxiety, sadness, and depression. Now, please don't misunderstand. In no way am I saying that um, if you have a biochemical situation going on, that there isn't more that needs to be done. However, even a person with the most severe of emotional challenges can benefit from attempting in the midst of their hardship or in the midst of their negative thought process, which becomes linking thoughts. In other words, nothing will ever get better for me. Nothing has ever been good for me what is good in, in me, what is good in life, and all of a sudden you're in this funk that lasts for hours, days, weeks, right? So the interruption is, well, what can I look for that could be better than this, or what around me is good? And we look at small things. The sun's out, you know, the sun is out, or um, somebody called me on the phone today, or somebody gave me a compliment today, or I like the new pair of jeans I bought. In other words, the contrast of what is not good or uncomfortable can be offset by a refocusing on something that is. In your life, there will be things in every area of life, the three spheres of life, the inner belief system, the professional, and the personal. Well, some of those things aren't always going to be going as swimmingly as you would like them to go all the time. But... Something in your life is going well today, and something in your life isn't going as well as you would like for it to. And it is the alertness of contrast, the duality of life, which is for everything that is good, there is an inherent, um, some would say evil. 
I choose the terminology of progressive or destructive. For everything that is progressive, there are destructive elements in the world because everything that we do is about balance, right? So we can't understand or comprehend something that is completely positive without having a negative balancer to it. It doesn't mean that one person or one group of people deserves um, something bad to happen to them, or and that's where we get tripped up. So there's always the retelling of a different story, a new story, a more empowering story over any negative experience. For example, someone who might have suffered great abuse or had struggled with being bullied might say, I learned through that experience the type of people that I want to associate with and they are more conscious of you know, caring about others and they are more considerate or such a person may learn that I prefer animals or I prefer music or I'm really gifted at writing or any other number of things. Now it's hard sometimes to look at the benefits of a perceived negative or destructive situation but one of the benefits of coaching is to kind of reframe and redesign and re-engineer how we look at the most fundamental areas of our lives in the past because a new story around what has been perceived to be a completely negative experience even a tenth of a, a degree difference in that perception can mean the difference between staying stuck with belief systems that hold you back from making progress, nothing will ever get better for me, and making that progress. Gee, I must have been really strong to get through that really bad experience. Gee, I'm stronger than I thought. That small shift in perception, that small shift in perspective is what we all need at one point or another in life. But it is the contrast of, am I looking at it from an optimistic, pessimistic, or open-ended view that will determine whether we are seeking to improve or get stuck in the emotional quadrant of our mind. In other words, emotions are great, but they're indicators, nothing more, nothing less. They are not the space from which decisions can be or should be made. Instead, positive emotions are an opportunity to stay present moment-minded. They're an opportunity to say, you know what, I really appreciate this or that thing. I really appreciate the opportunity to be alive or to spend time with family and friends. Or I really appreciate the opportunity to feel connected and, and committed. And then negative emotions. Hmm, what can I change? Should I change my actions? Should I change my perspective? Should I change my focus? Should I change my surroundings? What can I change? Every negative emotion is an indicator that you need to change something because the negative emotion is a proof that you are out of alignment with living a life that is fulfilling to you. Now, no one can change your emotional state but you. But there's this misnomer in our language most often that says something like, you made me feel. No. In reality, one gives the personal power to allow someone to influence their emotional state through interacting with them, but it's the giving away of one's personal power of focus. No one can make you feel something. Instead, actions that another person takes can remind you of an emotional state or can trigger an emotional state, but the emotions that you take on, even though in part they are biochemical responses, rather instant instantaneous, still you have to stay within the emotion through linking thought in order to become that dominant emotion. In other words, if you decided to laugh every time someone insulted you instead of cry, you'd get a completely different uh, outcome in life and you get a completely different outcome in your emotional state. Now, imagine if every time someone insulted you, you chose to punch them and you chose to become violently angry. You'd get a completely different emotional composite as a result. The idea is the contrast of people who live a progressive, some say positive, some say uh, forward motion life, and those who live a more negative or destructive life is the basis on how they handle 
process and react to their emotional states or the emotional cues that are in every situation. In other words, there is challenges for any person to remain present. How can I grow from this experience versus does this experience define me or affect me in a positive, negative, or neutral way? The experience of emotion is vital and necessary to human existence. However, it should not be a pre-qualifier or a defining factor in how one sees themselves. And so often, the emotional experience is where people place their self-esteem, self-value, and there's a lot of challenges in that. Instead, say, I know that I am a good person. I know that the opinions of one person out of seven billion don't need to be the definition of me and refocus and reframe and say, you know what? I know that I'm not going to completely connect with every person I meet, but there are people somewhere in the world who I will connect with on a deeper level because they think and believe and act and, you know, relate in the way that I do. Always look for commonality. Contrast is just a tool used to help us to identify our preferences, thereby the actions we take as a result of, I prefer this over that, therefore I will act this way. I prefer, you know, um, what dark chocolate over white chocolate, therefore I'll eat the dark chocolate. In other words, it doesn't mean that there is a universal right and wrong way to be. It's just the establishment of Preferences allow us to create our own personal identity, which people will and often do challenge from time to time. But the challenge of one's identity does not have to mean that we shift who we are. You know, critics are the contrast that can either be used to define a person. Someone said, I'm not good, therefore they must be right and I must give away my power. Or an inspiration to improve oneself or to change and to prove somebody wrong for their criticism. What we do and how we focus and how we internalize what is said to and about us determines our level of personal fulfillment, personal growth, and the stick to with which we look to and try to achieve certain goals or aspirations. Now, this video on contrast is pretty much complete, but it's an interesting one because I'd love for you to um, weigh in in the comment section below or on social media at P.O. Perception, Scott Golden at, P at P.O. Perception on Twitter, and just say, hey, these are the emotions or the things that I'm struggling with contrast about. How would we handle this or what could we do with it? And then we can kind of go in the direction of trying to dissect that a little bit. If you are looking for life or relationship coaching or even entrepreneurial coaching, because what people say about your entrepreneurial dreams can have a big impact, a gigantic one as a matter of fact, on the nature at which you create your financial freedom and sometimes having the benefit of just having someone retool or rework how you see what's going on or give you another perspective on circumstances that have already occurred can be liberating for those who are trying to reach certain professional, personal, or inner goals. Remember that all of these videos can be shared. We encourage you to do that. And, you know, hey, even in the making of this project, there is the desire to enlighten and enrich people's lives. There will be critics of this. We invite those criticisms because with the contrast of the criticism also comes those who align with the, um, I guess, information or the teachings here within. And then those who benefit will continue to listen and grow. Those who feel they do not benefit will at least have the opportunity to express where they are. The beauty in contrast is that every opinion, viewpoint, and um, point of attraction and point of intersection under the sun gets expressed and experienced 
Once again, this is Scott Golden reminding you, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.